Hey everyone, so before we head on our next adventure, I thought I'd give a little bit of an update. Considering it's the end of summer, it's the end of August, beginning of September, we're into meteorological autumn, which means basically the trees are going to start turning, nights are going to get cooler, daytime temps should start to cool down a little bit, although you can hear behind me, we still got the air conditioners running. Uh, it's still hot out in the 80s, but... It should hopefully start cooling down uh, shortly, which means we'll be able to get outside more without uh, sweating to death. So I didn't get any camping in this summer uh, between the gas prices, the prices of everything, campsites, food, um, just is going absolutely through the roof. It would have been too expensive. Also been staying a little bit closer to home and not getting out much. My wife's had a few health issues that were getting worked out she had to go for a cortisone shot not sure if it's really helping we're gonna see where we go from there as far as my fishing trips go i've been catching a few i've uh, been using that to really supplement our diets and eating this year because of the fact of just food prices are just extremely high i was hoping my garden would do a little bit better but the trout uh, really um, did a number of garden the 12 days of 100 degree heat really did not do my garden justice at all also as i mentioned in one of my prior videos i closed down two of my online stores the shipping costs the increase of fees and the cost of the raw goods to make my stuff have just increased beyond what i'd be able to charge for my products and have people still buy them i would have had to up the prices on my products by a good 12 to 15 dollars if not more it's been a real expensive summer um looking forward to the autumn though gas prices have come down the weather should start turning cooler as you can see by my hat cva uh connecticut valley arms they are a company that make muzzle loaders and hunting gear so i'm going to get back into hunting this year to help supplement my diet um hopefully be bringing some more cooking to my channel cooking up a uh, wild game but youtube doesn't like when it shows that we actually take the animal down and actually clean it so don't know if i'll really um feature too much of that youtube doesn't like To go with uh, tonight's meal I decided I'm gonna make a guacamole this is gonna be my first time making a guacamole I'm not gonna follow any specific recipe but I got my avocado tomato limes pepper scallion cilantro onion powder and a jalapeno or actually a chili pepper to make it a little bit spicy so We'll see how this uh, guacamole turns out. One thing with cooking, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Get most of the ingredients in. Let's go ahead and add in a little bit of cilantro. Add in a little bit of onion powder. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, 
squeeze our fresh lime. Go ahead and chop up a little bit of this hot pepper. Just to give it just a tiny bit amount of spice. My wife does not like hot food. All right, make sure this is on low and we just want to chop. Okay, guacamole is all chopped up. I went ahead and added some garlic to it. Let's go ahead and get this in a bowl. Looks yummy. Let's go ahead and give our guacamole a little bit of a taste. Make sure all the chunks are pretty much ground up. Not bad. I think if the avocados were a little bit more on the right side, it would have had a little bit more flavor. But it turned out pretty good. Just wish the avocados were a little bit more ripe. So then we'll put this aside and we'll put this in the fridge. Get it chilling to go with our tacos tonight. So now we're going to go ahead and get these scup cooking for our scup tacos. Now scup is a bony fish, so we're going to have to go ahead and pick the bones out of it as we cook it up, which means we're going to end up with fine little meat. Let's get some buttermilk in the pan. Go ahead and get our coconut oil melting in the pan. I use very little butter for flavoring and I use the coconut oil for frying because it's a much better oil for you. So while that's melting out, the key thing is to go ahead and season your oil. So we're gonna go ahead and start seasoning our oil while that's starting to melt. And throw a little bit of celery salt in there. Just a hint of cilantro. My wife does not like hot food, so I'm just going to do a touch of chili powder. Don't want to do too much. Got some dried garlic, which I reconstituted in water. I'm going to go ahead, throw those in there. Throw some ground ginger in there. Turn my heat down a little bit. Oops, all the way down. Not, not up. Throw a little bit of ground sage in there. Go ahead and get this all mixing up. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the scup cooking. The scalp porgies, whatever you want to call them. And I'm cooking a lot because I'm actually making dinner for four tonight. And bring some down for my stepfather and my mom. Now, I pretty much want these to slowly cook. 
I want them to absorb all the good spices and whatnot. All right, let's let these go ahead and cook up and I'll be right back with them. Okay, these are starting to cook up really nicely. A lot of people, what they do is they get their oil hot and they'll add their fish and they'll add their season on top. Um, I don't like to do it that way. To me, I'd rather get the oil hot, add the seasoning in to the oil itself and then cook the fish in the oil. To me, it just does a better job of absorbing the seasoning that way. As you can see where it's browning right in there, you got the seasoning that's cooking in. I just find it works a lot better to season up your oil versus throwing all the seasoning on top of the fish. I mean, you can do it your way, but that's kind of my preference. And I'm gonna go ahead Try to stop separating some of this meat from the bone. Okay, so the first pieces are pretty much done. Scup is a very bony fish. I'm trying to strip the meat off the bones. I'm probably going to end up picking some bones out of this as I plate it up in our tacos. But looks like the first batch is done. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the plate. Let it start cooling for the tacos a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead start the next batch cooking up all right so while i got the second batch cooking up i'm going to go ahead and give a piece of this to try you just like to do it before i put it in the top though yeah oh yeah that's good mm. corgi is a kind of a sweet fish that is good you can add a little bit more uh, coconut oil to my pan, turn the fire down just a little bit. Alright, so while that's cooking, we're going to go ahead and plate up the first couple dishes. Take a couple little tortillas. Put one in each plate. Add us a bed of romaine lettuce. Go ahead and slice up a tomato. that right in the middle also I'm gonna add just a little bit of chive and just a little bit of cilantro now we're gonna go ahead and add the skunk being careful not to get any of the bones because like I said scup is very bony Trying to pick out as much bones as possible from this. So we got our fish on there. I'm going to add some sweet baby rays secret sauce. A little bit in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this up. Get in some chips to go with it. Alrighty, it's time to eat tortilla with homemade guacamole. Hmm. Mm hmm. And uh, 
fish taco. Hmm. Hmm. Very good. Alrighty, so today we're out on a, another lake. Um, this is a lake that I used to come to a lot in my 20s. The cool thing about it is, in my early 20s, my friend had a uh, camp on this lake and he used to leave his canoe sitting out on the shoreline. Much different time than probably going to do that today without it getting stolen. But he used to leave his canoe sitting out on the shoreline. I used to be able to take his canoe whenever I wanted. Go duck hunting, goose hunting, fishing. Uh, could drive right into his camp. The other cool thing was we used to ice fish a lot on this lake. Haven't had too many good winters for ice fishing lately, but we'll see how uh, fishing goes. Uh, to continue on with my update, another thing I've been doing is I've been getting rid of a lot of things that I have owned. Um, things I just don't need anymore. Um, pretty much keeping all my outdoor gear, keeping um, a, lot of, a lot of the household stuff that we use, and of course our uh, furniture. But as far as like anything else that I had, um, it's pretty much going. Don't have a need for it anymore. Don't use it. Wish I could get other people in my family on board with cleaning up and getting rid of stuff. But that's the way it is. So I'm going to enjoy a day today out fishing. Um, hotly cloudy, about 84 degrees. I took a dip in the lake before getting in the kayak, so we'll just see how uh, today goes. I also want to go out to the point that I used to go out go out duck hunting on, see if it's still um, wooded. It borders state land, so if it's still wooded and they haven't built up a lot of houses around there, hopefully this fall I'll be able to do some duck and goose hunting on here, although the association that owns the property around this lake has really changed a lot. Um, so we'll see, but I'm gonna head out, start doing some fishing, and then just kind of see how things go. Well, I just had a bite and my line got all tangled up. Let's see if he's still on. Oh, oh yeah, he's on. He is on. Oh, and he's fighting pretty good, too. Let's see what we got. <laughs> yes, we got ourselves a largie. Come here, you. Oh, and he's a keeper. He is a keeper. Nice. First fish of the day. A nice largie. And he's a keeper. Alright. Not even two seconds later and I got another one on and he is running with it. Yeah, it looks like he's slowing down now. So I'm going to go ahead and set the hook on him. He feels like another good one, too. That's really biting today. I like that. So he's another keeper. So he's coming in awfully easy. I don't know about that. He took a lot of, a lot, a lot of line and ran with it. Let's see what we got now. Uh, took me 
keeping down the seaweed from one thing. Come over here. Little largey under the hair. number two. Alrighty, well, I was not going to keep that bass, but unfortunately he is not going to make it. So, I'm going to keep him. Like I said early in this video, I used the uh, fish I catch to supplement the diet. Um, we all know how food prices are and such, but usually I don't keep them unless they're worth keeping. But unfortunately, that one there is just not going to make it. So we got two bass so far. I think the limit is five. Um, so we get three more keepers. I'm gonna paddle on out to a little bit of a different area. See what else we can get. Well, I'm heading back into a river system, which I wanted to check out for duck hunting later this year. The only issue is going to be is if the drought keeps up, um, I may not be able to get back in here. It's getting awfully shallow. Still, it's a good area, but it's getting awfully shallow. And once they start draining this reservoir for the winter months, this may end up being all dry land. So yeah, this looks like a good area. Still all state land back here. Doesn't look like I'm going to be able to go any further up this way. I see all trees down. This is a beautiful area back here though. Very shallow up through here. Nope, oh, maybe I can get through. Never actually been back here before. Very beautiful back here. Definitely should have taken my uh, camera. This is part of the uh, Clear River system. Looks like we got a campsite over here. Somebody was camping up through here. It's like a 
does get a little bit deeper so I can continue up through here very beautiful area is gonna make it under this branch Alrighty, looks like I'm gonna have to uh, turn around. Getting way too shallow and way too much debris. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get any further up the river. Oh well, and it's getting way too shallow, it's starting to hit bottom. Definitely a beautiful area to get back into. Wish I could have gone further, but it's getting way too shallow. Well, it's been a little while since we caught anything, so might as well go ahead and open this up. <clears throat> so, for you YouTubers, you already know what this is. This is the Mystery Tackle Box. I am not sponsored. I'm not a subscriber to this. Um, matter of fact, they actually sell these occasionally where I work. They sell the bass and the trout ones. So, this time of year, I decided to pick up the bass one. Um, heard a lot about these. This is box number 114. So it says it's got about five to six items and around a $25 value. Find an affordable way to discover new fishing products. So I'm going to open this up, see what's in it. not the gracefulest way to open it but don't have my knife on me and my keys are in the pouch so go ahead and rip around where that tape is and let's see what we have in here all right so first we got a floating 
Westland spot on. Since I'm in shallow water, I may give that a try. Got some hooks, always can use hooks. Got a Thunderhawk jig. I will be totally honest with you, these jigs, I've never caught anything on them since I was a kid. We got some big bite baits. That look like a big old June bug crawdad. We actually sell these at work, so it's quite interesting. And we got some bruiser baits, diamond tail, watermelon red, plastic worms. So I don't think I'm going to go ahead and throw on the um, floating jig right now since I'm in shallower, calm water. I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot. All right, so the cool thing is it's rattling. So it's kind of a rattle trap. Now I do have a step swivel on here, so I don't know how well it's going to float. Oh yeah, still floats. All right, let's give this a try. All right, well I decided to switch away from that top water bait. The wind's picking up way too much. Try to do anything top water, so. I'm gonna go ahead and try one of these guys. Like I said, we sell these at work. This is Big Bite Baits. So we got this Crawdad June Bug looking thing. I actually sell these at work, I've never bought them. So we're gonna go ahead and give them a try. Figure they might work because of the fact that bass just love crayfish, and that's what this thing looks like. So I'll go ahead, and give it a try. Since I'm in a little bit deeper water, and the wind's picked up way too much to use the surface bait. 